And, and a lot of people ask, well, is Puerto Rico corrupt? Yes, in the same way that the United States is corrupt. Is the Capitol building in Puerto Rico corrupt? Yes, in the many same ways that the U.S. Congress is corrupt. And it's something that uh, we need to make sure that we are able to face and that we're able uh, to combat uh, because it's like an anchor that does not allow our society to move forward. I think if you're someone that you're strong to your principles and you have quite clearly what you want to achieve, it's hard to be in the political arena, primarily because politics is usually about being able to compromise, being able to compromise for the greater good. And a lot of people start justifying a lot of things. They start looking the other way when they shouldn't because the end justified the means. And that was my experience uh, when I got elected at 27. I went through a process uh, of a special election in which I was not supposed to win, in which there was this particular candidate that had the entire political establishment in favor. And as soon as I got elected, the same individuals that had made my life so difficult through that uh, electoral process were the same individuals that were offering you so many things, now saying, well, if you play your cards right, maybe one day you can be Speaker of the House, maybe one day you can be Mayor of San Juan, maybe one day you can be Governor. And they start to try to find ways to compromise you. And since I didn't own any of them anything from the day that I stepped foot in Puerto Rico's House of Representatives that 19th of August of 2013, I said, I'm going to do things my way. I'm going to put the, the interest of the people of Puerto Rico before anything, even my possibility of being reelected. And if that means I'm only an elected official for three and a half years, so be it. But the time that I'm here, I'm going to do things correctly. We have an infrastructure problem in San Juan, whether it is working and safe roads, whether it is the parks and recreational areas that have not been maintained as they should, whether it is buildings, private and public, that have been abandoned and are currently not in use. But we need to think outside the box, but we need to innovate, but we need to think of San Juan as a as a ciudad inteligente, an intelligent city. We need to think of San Juan uh, as a ciudad de vanguardia in terms of education, in terms of, of providing for, for innovation. A lot of people don't know this, but San Juan, the municipality of San Juan, the government of San Juan, has a public university, El Colegio Universitario de San Juan. And right now, that's the most accessible college tuition in the entire island. We need to capitalize on that. We need to make sure we expand on that. We need to make sure that we make that part of our economic development strategy. So I think we, we have a great task at hand. All of that has to be centered around radical transparency and absolute community participation. In Puerto Rico, for a very long time, we have been told that we're not good enough, that we cannot stand on our own two feet, are not able to, to dream of, of a different country than the one that we have. And unfortunately, a lot of people have come to terms with that, have believed that. So when we talk about the decolonization of Puerto Rico, we refer not only to our legal relationship with the U.S., but also to our relationship as individuals in a society that as aspires for more. But it's not only about changing where our political sovereignty resides, it's also about whether we become independent, whether we become a state, whether we have some sort of free association with the United States. What's democracy going to look like in Puerto Rico? Um, who are the people that are going to be able to influence the different policies here in Puerto Rico? We have a crisis of democracy in Puerto Rico, not only because of our colonial relationship, but because of the social inequality that we have in Puerto Rico. It's also about making sure that the people of Puerto Rico have the necessary tools uh, to be able to, to think critically, to be able to decide upon themselves of, for what's best for the people of Puerto Rico and not depend on anyone, not even the government, not even a political party, 
uh, in order to decide uh, what's best for our, for our country.